Hello everybody. Say hey to me, my name is Music Skeleton aka MS. I am the spirit of time, especially of time in music. Have you ever realized that music art is based on time? When you're watching a painting or a sculpture, or what you're seeing is already there, isn't it? You have it in your mind, you understand it for what it is. It stands just in front of your eyes, forever and ever. You're bloody miserable, Jones, you know. When we listen to music instead, we have just to wait until time uh, passes by. <laughs> Hi there, hope you good. Uh, my friend Music Skeleton is right. Music is based on time. If you want to grasp the full meaning of any piece of music, well, you have to listen it uh, from the beginning until the end. Uh, music is so, and it has always been like that, but it has especially been like that during a particular period of the 20th century. After the Second World War, classical composers started to change the art and thus music began to um, move towards an explored and unexpected lands. Lamont Young, John Cage, Terry Raleigh, Steve Reich, Philip Glass and the whole minimalist movement took music to another level. They wanted to focus their approach on the true aspect of this art, that is time. It's a weird thing. Because, you know, when we listen to music, we are just having fun with it. We are entertained by it. It amuses us and sometimes our mind and our spirit, our feelings and even our body, for sure, are totally subjected to its power. So, in other words, we don't care to how fast or slow time passes by. Actually, we don't care about time at all. But music can be as much as magic when it is structured on a particular time architecture. Take for instance um, the most famous composition of Raleigh in C. This is one of the first pieces of minimalist music. It was written in 1964. It starts with a central C note pulsing like a metronome. Then, other pulses from different instruments are joining in as well. And the more these structures gather in, the more the music tends to modify itself. And we end up finding ourselves within a sort of magical clockwork made of hills and valleys, climbs and slopes. Or oh, having listened instead to that composition of Brian Nino of the late 90s, it is called Lightness. It is ambient music, not minimalist indeed, but actually derived from it. Can you hear these little micro subtle movements and changes throughout the envelope of the whole piece? Well, cut long story short, I want to start with this episode, a brand new vlog collection called You Need the Sample Library 4. I love talking not just about a particular single sample library, but sample libraries which are addressed to a particular uh, music genre or to kind of cinematic musical structure and gesture. So. Um, sample libraries which are taken into account today are exactly the ones which provide us a sense of moving according to time. 
These libraries are generally built with a sort of layer architecture, meaning all nodes have been recorded in different ways, different playing techniques, or even different uh, instruments. I mean, within a single patch. So in the end, it allows you to mix and crossfade between those layers using your common MIDI control change messages, most frequently Mudwheel. So today I'm gonna really quickly hear with you some of the patches which are coming from these three orchestral libraries. The Spitfire Audios, Oliver Arnold Chamber Evolutions, the Time Bundle by Orchestral Tools, which consists actually in two distinct clips, Time Macro and Time Micro, and the amazing and brand new choral Mysteria by native instruments. So without further ado, let's get started with the Spitfire one. The All for Arnold's Chamber Evolution by Spitfire Audio. Um, just want to show you the main um, folder structure inside this li library. So here we are, Chamber Evolution. So we have an advanced uh, folder uh, which provide us uh, individual e evolution and patches individual waves and, and other patches and these are the main four instruments of this lip uh, bass is great bass is waves but especially chamber grid and chamber waves so i've just uploaded the here in uh, contact the chamber grid gui and the chamber waves the same uh, settings apply for uh, the basses. So if I'm going to load the basses grid, it's just a grid for the basses. And, and uh, here we have the basses waves. So um, we have here in the chamber grid uh, this uh, weird um, structure, this weird grid actually, and this grid provide us any sort of combination between uh, different plane techniques of uh, this chamber or string strings orchestra. Uh, we have here from number one to six uh, subtle movement then we have from 7 to 11 uh, thrills then we have episodic from 12 till uh, 15 and then we have uh, last not least uh, here from 16 till uh, 19 uh, dissonant so just take a listen of this instrument by itself, just out of the box. This is the first subtle movement. So you notice that um, the y-axis offers us uh, the, the chance to have each note, each uh, octave of the, the our keyboard assigned to a particular um, dot, a particular spot here. The second octave here which is uh, subtle then we have even the G sharp subtle then we go with the C with the C3 we go um, in this column which is if I remember if I were called thrills and then so this should be the trails. Yes. Then we have 
I always forget uh, episodic and dissonant. Then we have main central octave here uh, with episodic. And then we can have uh, the, uh, our next octave with dissonance. It evolves, right? That is so exciting. Man, you, you have to get it on your fingers. Really, it moves you. So this is the, the grid. If you go with uh, uh, command or control, uh, you can assign a pretty straightforward column to every playing technique or with uh, hold and shift you can have um, sort of slope uh, line here you can create the uh, slope lines yeah so anyway we pass now to the chamber waves which is actually the pretty much the same kind of uh, samples here but they are triggered um, not with uh, this kind of uh, virtual grid but with a uh, more traditional way here with a uh, long and uh, short note so this is the longest note here oh sorry I have to assign to Omni and switch to solo so it provides it's uh, a sort of mu dynamic and musical arcs from piano, pianissimo, to mezzo forte, mezzo piano, and coming back to, to piano. Tremolo. Then we have uh, tremolo long, tremolo short, tremolo shortest, and uh, vibrato longest. So I mean, uh, you, you can have here um, within this. Um, Library two kind of approach a chamber grid with this virtual grid and a more traditional one with the waves uh, with the, this this kind of dynamic arcs. Um, the same thing, as I mentioned before, applies to basses. So uh, chamber grid and chamber waves belong to to the entire orchestra string orchestra, whereas uh, we have just a particular spot for for the basses here so that's pretty much it um we move now to orchestral tools macro and micro time macro and time macro so are you ready okay let's rumble so uh, we are here just to show you the main folder hierarchy uh within this two uh different lips uh, of the same orchestral tool tools bottle which is called time we have time macro and time mi micro macro micro so uh, for instance uh, we actually we have uh, the um, usual uh, folder structure which orchestral tools applies to its uh, new um, libraries so we have a folder with multi a folder with a single and time patches the same thing applies to uh, the micro we are in the same uh, kind of structure so begin with with micro um, in we have multi instrument combined section let's try string orchestra multi So this 
is this sustained? Sustained Sultasso. Okay. Um, woodwinds, an orchestral, multi. So these are um, combination of instruments. Ensemble, ensemble woodwinds or ensemble strings. Mixed choir, multi. And here we have uh, many, 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 many articulations. Sustain na. This is sustain swells ad libitum. Sustain fifth ha. Uh. This where. Graphic symbol means sustained second drops. Uh, 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 uh. So, uh, you listen, uh, you hear the, 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 the sound coming out from this sample uh, offers us a way to compose along a time perspective. So. It's, again, it's not uh, still music, still notes, still chords or a harmony, but they are moving across times. Ultra time, so chrono reverse. Let's try this one. Chrono reverse. Accelerate time. So we are, we go from pianissimo to mezzo piano. All you want to do is just moving your module up or down, you know, so it's crossfading between two different layers, you know. This is one layer, then the second layer enters in and crossfade with the previous one. And here you have the, the global uh, result from triple P pianissimissimo cross fade cross fade cross fade you know this is the actual layer technique which I was speaking before and the same uh, things apply the cross fade I mean apply to the graphic symbol here in the GUI you see that they are fitting <laughs> Crossfitting between the MF and the forte and triple P. So let's try to have a listen to even the orchestral time micro, which probably is eventually uh, even more interesting. I mean, time we have here time orchestra, and one of the most, if I well recall one of the most uh, interesting sounds here is um, this uh, crackling chimney no winds uh, crazy wind sign let's try I've recently used that for one of my composition and I found it really amazing 
Oh yeah, this one. Exactly. Crazy wind times. Crazy Casey wind wind chimes, sorry. Casey wind chimes on crazy. You see? So we have again here two layer one of the this one which is wind and other chimes all around here and then as you move your mud wheel up another layer starts entering in and crossfade with a choir layer with this kind of choir drops here this is magical here yeah? And one last thing, uh, one last um, sound I just want to show you to, to let you hear is this one. Um, the harp and Celeste mandolin. But we actually we have to go into the uh, individual section, probably. The harp celeste, yeah, harp celeste mandolin, yeah, yeah, this one, harp celeste, 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 celeste okay, harp celeste mandolin, irregular harps, uh, one or two, we have different. Uh, so this is the combination between harp celeste and mandolin, and then we have as we beef up our modulation wheel we have different layers coming in this is really 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 stunning and magic sound So, coming up next, Mysteria by um, Native Instrument. It's uh, for the structure, it's pretty much nothing because we just have the NKI instrument here, Mysteria. Uh, so, let's give it a listen. You know, we have here uh, this XY pad. which you can move our pointer and we can start creating a really amazing coral texture So, as you can probably tell, um, the more you move away from the zero point here, up and right, the more you go, you go odd, dark, evil, weird, wild, until you'll be crap in your pants, you know. That's freaking you know, amazing, yeah. So we have here the, um, the main uh, <coughs> GUI, the, a list of um, of sound, of sample here. For instance, let's take this anci ancient didgeridoo. Wow. That's really wild. Uh, if I well recall, uh, I found few weeks ago um kind of strange um kind of strange sound uh which was tonal okay tonal but uh, uh beautiful category media soft choir choir let's see if i can find it again uh, no really uh, blue quartet probably 
sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Blue quartered one. See, you see. As you can hear, um, the crossfade between the layers is really smooth. As the previous libraries uh, we have just seen before, actually. You know, one relevant uh, um, drawback of this layer structure could be to perceive the exact moment when a layer enters in. In that way, it would be just a bit jerky, but in, that, in this case, it's really, really, really smooth. Wow. Stunning. So, there are two ways of uh, changing the, um, the type of sound. You can either move towards the X axis or the Y axis. So guys, in your opinion, what makes for a good orchestral library? Do you tend to use this kind of layer libraries or do you prefer more traditional ones? Do you think a normal library could do the same job as the layer based ones as well? Or do you find instead these labels are adding something new which would be easier said than done when using traditional orchestral samples? I would really love to hear your thoughts, comments, criticism, feedback, suggestions in the comments down below. Subscribe, I guess, and one of those would be much appreciated for me and for you as well for sticking till the end. Music is joy, and joy is love.